Hey everybody, welcome back to another RCT2 hacking tutorial. It's been a hot minute since we did our last video. Um, I think I might have come out of the blocks a little hot on doing these videos uh, so frequently, so this may be the more appropriate cadence kind of here forward, so um, apologies for that if you've been sitting around waiting for one. Um, but uh, today we're going to look at the SNS Scream and Swing. And I know we just did the pirate ship, which is sort of a similar hack, but uh, this one is something I've gotten requested by a few folks, and uh, something that fit well in this part of the park, so it kind of made sense to do this one next, because it was sort of the natural expansion um, of our park. Uh, if we do back out a little bit, we can kind of see what our park is doing here. We have a pretty, uh, pretty nice little park growing here from... Small, humble beginnings with our little 2x2 two two flat ride here to the Ferris wheel, the Condor, the swing ride, the rocking horse uh, track ride, the diagonal disco, the, um, uh, uh, the launch loop, the train, uh, the log flume with the two stations, the uh, wooden coaster here, go-karts, carousel, swinging ship, haunted mansion, and now, adding to that list... Uh, Probably the most extreme of the flat rides so far. This is the SNS Scream and Swing. So these rides are um, basically a swing ride with two arms that uh, swing opposing to each other. Now they can operate a single arm at a time, um, but this is sort of the standard full operating mode for these kind of rides. Um, they have a number of a number of capacity varieties, uh, including a um, a two, uh, or one that seats kind of two side by side and back to back, so four per vehicle. Uh, a good one to use for that would be the compact inverted shuttle coaster, uh, the Vacoma Invertigo uh, model if you're going by coaster names. Um, the challenge with this is that you can't really get um, back to back seating, so typically what we do here is just uh, flip the train. Uh, or flip the various cars opposite of each other uh, so that they at least go opposing. Um, and then if you look underneath, we've got our little green track down here um, that we're kind of going back and forth with. So let's uh, let's dive right in and take a look at our nice little sample track here. I've used four different tracks here uh, for it. Um, you don't need to do that, um, but this is set up that if you wanted to delete the yellow track later um, because of object saving or ride slot saving or whatever, it's set up so that you can do that and your ride isn't going to get affected. Um, so basically let's take a look at this. What's going to happen is uh, nothing because I have that set wrong. So let's back this off a little bit and start here. So what's going to happen is the ride is going to come up here on a lift hill just to give us some height to work with. Um, and then we are going to split it apart here. And again, I like to do these splits with, you know, a hard track here, not with the tile inspector. Um, it's a little more complicated to build, but I just find the re the ability to reset the ride so much easier in this kind of a setup rather than um, you know any of the the other ones. Uh, I mean, with Tile Inspector especially, just because it's such a pain in my opinion to get that reset. Um, so this way, you know, you spend a little bit of headache building it the first time, which it shouldn't be a headache because I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. But uh, the bonus of that is that now you can reset it whenever the heck you want. So uh, let's get this back up to 45 and back up to 7 cycles. And there we go. The nice thing with powered launch is that it's going to accelerate a little bit more each time. So uh, you can see these first ones are a little bit low and then the second ones are going a little bit higher uh, here until we get up a little bit more. Um, whoop, not the right way there. Oops. Well, we can, uh, we will make sure we fix that one. That was taking my setup. Well, let's go ahead and fix it. We'll just dive right on in and uh, get this thing built. All right, so we are going to um, first build our station. So the station goes perpendicular across your ride, so then you can put your entrance and exit uh, here. So you have our entrance on the one side and the exit on the other. You can place them kind of wherever you want. I mean, the station the station literally just goes where where you want your ride to be set up so you can kind of do you know whatever whatever works best for you let's get this thing in line just so that we can kind of line it up here a little bit so we're going to go five and i'm going to back it up here just a little bit to make sure we have room 
All right, so we're going to go five um, because each of these swing arms is going to be um, spaced apart by one, uh, and then we want just an additional space on either side to put the entrance and the exit. So we'll go five there. Now, um, right away, we're going to switch to a different track because this is the one that I want to be able to delete if you know we feel like it later. So we'll use the twister track for this. You can kind of use whatever you want, to be honest. All right, so uh, lift hill straight away. And then we do have, under the cheats, pretty much everything enabled except for building it in valid height so we don't accidentally screw that up. Um, so we are going to maintain this chain lift through the corner, curve up, curve up, and I mean, really it doesn't have to be maintained. It's just a matter of you know, this is how you get up to this point. And then we'll go one, two, slope up, one, and then a second one that's just up the hill. Okay, so now we've gotten to this point. Before we forget, let's go back to the station. And with our disable clearance checks turned on, we are going to put one up, put the chain on, and click it. So now this is merged in, um, so that is done. We can put our cuts here if we want. Um, at the same time, we can also go ahead and change the train. So I'm using the B&M Dive Coaster 10 Across, which is something that X7 has made. Uh, I'm not going to say his whole name because I can't. Uh, it's like extreme something. But I will um, put a download link to the this train if you want to use it uh, for custom scenery. Um, you don't have to. You can use the um, you can use the six across, which is a little less realistic. So um, the the big model that SNS offers is ten across. So it's ten back to backs with two arms, which is forty seats per train, which is pretty or vehicle, which is pretty crazy. Uh, for a ride cycle, a uh, pretty super high capacity ride. But uh, since we don't have back-to-back, -back, we get 20 plus our little bonus dummy track down below. Um, so one of the things to note about this ride type or this train type, if you use it, um, the BNM Dive 10 Across, and I think the 8 Across is the same way, there's an invisible car on the back. Um, X7 confirmed this to me. I don't know why, though. Um, and he didn't seem to know quite why either, but um, that's important because you have to make sure that you don't forget about that one. I, I couldn't figure out why my split wasn't working when I first uh, put this hack together, and uh, it took me ages to figure out that there was an invisible car out there that was going off on a different route affecting my hack. So uh, just be aware that that's a thing. Um, if you follow this one exactly, um, then that won't be an issue. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is get rid of the slope up here because we're going to build our reverse points. As always, and I'll try and go through this pretty much every time, whenever you do your reverse hacking like this, you always build the exit first, and then you build the entrance. So we are going to go down one, flatten it out, and then you can see over here we're going to do this corner. So one, two, and then uh, we have another one, two here flat. So we're going to go one and two. All right, done there. So we can right click on this and we can rebuild that slope. We built the exit, now we build the entrance, done. Now up top, we're gonna do the same thing. We removed the uh, first piece at the top of the lift hill there. Um, remember to turn off your chain lift, by the way, uh, when you get to that point. So now we're gonna curve. We're gonna put a set of brakes and these brakes are gonna be set at four, which is the lowest setting it goes. And then we're gonna put another curve. Then we're gonna put one more. And then we want to do the dive coaster little steep bit here. Now, you can't do it with this because we use Twister. So we're going to click on this real quick. Um, change the track type to vertical coaster. Build this. And then we're going to go right back. Um, this was just how I derived this. You can obviously there are plenty of plenty and plenty of ways to do a shoestring. Um, so you your own methods. Um, it worked just fine. Uh, but if you want an easy way to do it, just literally copy this. Okay, uh, so next up is uh, we remove the, the piece right before the slope and put an S-bend in here. We're gonna go one, two, and then we're also gonna turn uh, this way. Uh, now we'll go back here and we'll put that piece back in, the straight piece. So we build our exit and we build our entrance, done. Um, now we will get rid of the uh, curve piece here. And then we'll go ahead and build uh, this exit out this way. Um, and here we're going to go. And then we're going to put a curve piece that crosses the other one. Now, why the cross? So the only reason I have the curves crossing here is because it just so happened that by doing that, it spaced these cars just enough 
they lined up pretty much accurately when you tested this and they sat at the bottom because really what you want is by the time your car that you split off at the bottom hits the station in the orange track you want the other two sitting just at the right spot and um so that that's really the balance and kind of the timing aspect of all this all right so let's go back to this let's put in our curve once again since we've got that so now we're good uh, up top and then we will also get rid of this guy down here this curve below and then we're going to put in two straight pieces one two and then we'll go back through and do this. Okay, so that is the general splitting and um, reversing hack. So the idea is you're gonna come up here, we're gonna split off the um, front car down to this lower section, and we're gonna split off the, top, the last two cars and that uh, fourth invisible car uh, over to this side and back it up, slow it down with the brakes, curve it around here. This slope, because it's the steep slope, is just enough to slow this down enough that we'll send car two this way to the right, and then we'll send car three and invisible four over this way and then to the left. So now let's go in here and build our, um, our slope pieces here. So we are going to use the twister coaster, and uh, you can use whatever you want, but I like these steep pieces just because it gives it smooth um, kind of smooth running. Um, so first of all, first thing you got to do is pay attention to the direction that you're building. Um, so this one is going in this direction because this track is going to go turn around so we can actually build that right now. One, two, one piece here, small turn, large turn, and now we're aligned, but you can see that this track is going in that direction. We want to make sure that this uh, this looping section or our uh, arc track is also going in this direction. Now um, you can't get a perfect arc here because these quarter loops are too small. But uh, I put one vertical section in here, and that seems to cover it. So there, there we go. Um, not too bad. So what we want to do here, uh, and why that one crashed earlier, is we want to go through here. Want to build this to connect up. We're going to get rid of it and then close it up. And then I'm going to go back in and build this connection. So that was it. We want to make sure that we build this section first, the actual arc, and then we want to build in. Now don't forget to go back to the yellow track, right click, and then we're going to merge that in two. Done. Okay, so now let's get rid of this piece just so that we can go through here and build the other one. So we're going to build this out of the same track just from an object saving or a track saving standpoint. We're going to do the same thing, but make sure that you turn your ride around. You can see that now we are going in this direction as far as direction of travel. Whenever you merge, you need to make sure your direction of travel is the same direction as the vehicle is going. And if it's not, then it's not going to work. So that's one of your troubleshooting things if you end up having trouble. All right, so we'll go ahead and build this guy just to Set him out there. Go vertical, one extra, and then the quarter loop. Done. Okay, so now we will go ahead and build this guy in to connect, and then we're set there, and then let's see what we need to do here. So we're going to go to turn on our height markers and go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, turn the corner, one, two, turn the corner, and then one more to merge. Done. Okay. So we are getting there, we are rolling. So let's go back to our uh, spike over here, or well not spike, but our end track that we uh, turned down. So this is the control vehicle, this is car number one. It always has to be car number one that's or the one that's arriving at the station. So that's why we split off number one below. So we're gonna slope down and then we're just gonna curve this down. And the only reason we're doing this is just to get it down here quickly. Um, it doesn't really matter as far as you know any of that kind of stuff goes and then we're going to curve it here and then we will leave it at that because now we're going to come in here and we are going to get our um our little uh mini coaster track and actually let's first figure out where we are so let's right click here and see that we are on this square mark that Okay, and now let's come here. Mini coaster. Uh, go. Turn on those height markers. Keep getting confused with landmarkers day, and there's the first piece. 
Uh, so we are going to put a straight piece here after the big curve. So you can see on the one over here that we've done, we have the big curve, one straight piece, then the S bend, and then immediately three pieces of station. The reason we're doing three pieces of station is because it will slow the vehicle down. So we're going to go in that direction. Now we're going to delete this S bend because remember, we want to make sure that as this ride down here is going forwards and backwards, we want to go forwards on this other track because we don't want to risk this backing up onto um, this merge point and crashing, because it will. Um, so we're gonna actually just do this real simple. We're gonna build a loop. There's no reason for this to be a loop. Um, it, it really, like, there literally is no reason for this to be a loop. We're not gonna use near the whole thing. Uh, it's just convenient for building. If you need to save objects, go ahead and delete like three quarters of that. So we're gonna build back this again, and now we're gonna remember to right click on the curve here and then build that in. So there's all of our merges. We've done a ton of them on this one. Um, and, you know, for um, for this kind of ride, it's, it's quite a few. But um, just to recap, we have our station here, which we've merged into our splitting track, the yellow. Uh, we, oh, we missed a piece right here. There you go. Turn off that chain left and uh, put it back. So, you know, don't be frustrated with yourself if you miss something the first time just because there's just so many things. All right, so let's go back in. We have one train, we have three cars per train, and we are going to use power launch uh, passing station. Uh, you'll note that we do not have um, the uh, number of circuits here, so this is the other one, for example. What we can do to change that is go back to our ride type and change it to twister coaster. Now we have those pieces. But for the purposes of the initial setup, we want to set this at um, 45, or well, not 45, that's our final one. We want to set it something less than 45. Let's just pick 31. Basically, we want it to be carried up here by the chain lift at that point, and we don't really want it to be carried, uh, or we don't want to launch this over or past the chain lift or through it. Okay. So, and you can see that we've actually missed it right there, and the reason being is that our lift hill chain speed was set too low. So we're going to up that to 6 miles per hour, and try that again. So that was something I just didn't copy, mostly just to see if it worked or not. But six miles an hour is what we're using, which is going to give us enough oomph to get that bottom car pulled off. So now we've got the bottom car, uh, which is car one, and then two, three, and then remember there's that invisible car in the back also. So here we go. We're going to quickly reverse this. So two and three are going to split off. Now one's going to go down, and this is going to all happen real fast. We're going to close this. They're going to cross. And then you can see this one's going to come down, merge in, and it's going to slowly park itself right here. So um, you want it to be just slightly off of the station here, so you don't want it to be aligned there, considering you want it to be kind of between tiles or like as close to like next to each other as you can get. So this is where I got to. I figured I kind of liked that that setup there. All right, so now let's go back to our settings and let's adjust this up. Now I found that 45 miles per hour uh, is kind of the appropriate height of the ride and I went with seven circuits. You can go with more, you can go with less. Honestly, these ride cycles in real life are usually kind of short, so we're going to stick with that. Okay, so now we can kind of see this rolling back and forth and it should, when we get to the right height here, uh, not uh, or continue on to the arc, which it does, so it didn't crash like the other one did. So key difference there is just paying attention to what you do. Um, so we want this to go just a little bit beyond the vertical, which is right there. I believe they go up to 120 degrees. Uh, so, you know, I figure that to be right around there. Again, you can see that the, it's this ride is really not using that whole loop that I built underneath down here. This can just be a straight track. It can be whatever it needs to be. Um, it really doesn't affect things, so just kind of set it at whatever you want to do and leave it at that. And then once you finish those seven cycles, um, it will enter that station and then it will slow itself down. There we go. And that's enough, in my opinion, that's enough that it slows itself down. I mean, you can get all fancy with this and hack it so that on the seventh one it slows, you know, from the very top. But we don't need to do that. Okay, so finally, let's make our stuff invisible. So this first yellow one, like I said, it can go away, but I wouldn't delete it until you're very you know, complete with the park and you're about to release the thing, then go back through and delete it. So we're going to make that Crooked House. 
Underneath, we're going to leave that because it really doesn't matter. It's just there. Um, the arc track cannot be Crooked House or it will crash. It needs to be a tracked type ride. So we're just going to go with uh, the submarine ride because it has none of those sprites. So it's just not going to show up. If for whatever reason you were to pick like Crooked House or whatever, the ride will crash. So don't do that. So don't pick a flat ride. Um, and then lastly, we're going to pick... Um, any one of the flat rides here, uh, I generally just go with Crooked House. Um, I'm not Corkscrew, Crooked House. Uh, so the, the cars will drop slightly, uh, just a little bit. Uh, I found that wasn't a big deal. If you find it is, as far as your scenery goes, then you know you can pick something else. And then obviously once your, uh, your entrance and exit are all set, you can do uh, make those invisible in the Tile Inspector by inserting a null object. Um, for the this guy over here, I did rotate both of these, so click this, rotate it, and then we built out from there to your Q space. So there's there's that. So that's really it. Um, it's it's a lot. Um, you know, kind of just looking at it here, it just looks messy and difficult, but it's really not. Just follow the step by step, and um, you'll you'll get it pretty quickly. So I, I think it's. Um, it's a nice hack, and uh, it certainly has a little bit of adjustment needed if you're going to use a different kind of vehicle. Um, it shouldn't be much adjustment, but uh, you know, you'll know you have to adjust the timings and the speed and, and everything else um, just to make it fit. So not a big deal, but uh, just be aware if uh, you go with something else, and that's something you're going to have to work on. But there's our ride, and it can theme it up real nicely. I kind of pulled from... Uh, Cedar Points uh, Skyhawk and made this guy with a bunch of custom scenery pieces and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I have my air tanks back here uh, which the real ones have you know somewhere nearby. These are maybe a little bit small perhaps um, but there you have it. So um, we continue to expand out around our little tiny lagoon here that seemed you know just right size back when we built this ferris wheel but now it seems maybe a little bit small perhaps. Um, but we are going to continue to expand over in this direction next, and uh, I think we're going to get a little vertical next time. So we'll leave that as our hint uh, and uh, sign off at that. So um, hopefully you got something out of this and it was easy to do. If you have trouble with the hack for whatever reason, leave a comment on the video uh, or message me directly, and I will help uh, you work through all that kind of stuff. Um, if you have a suggestion for a hack you'd like to see or a request, feel free to leave that too. And um, all these comments and everything else are recommended or, or uh, appreciated. Um, and certainly if you haven't subscribed to the channel, definitely do that so you can catch more of uh, these types of videos. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoy your new Scream and Swing in your park. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.